Hey everyone, Jen here. Um, so I want to share a ghost story with you today. And I don't know how well it's going to go over as far as being filmed and me talking about it is, but it's freaking crazy. So I really want to share it with people. Um, so I very just, this is so silly. I very distinctly remember the time frame that this happened in because <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street was filming in Barrington and I went almost every night while they were filming there to watch, which was awesome. Um, and one of the nights I had come home from work and I was going to go back out there, but it was late. I think it was like eight or nine o'clock by the time that I was leaving. This is silly. I know this is silly, but in my head, Barrington's like a really ritzy area for people that haven't been there. Like nothing really bad ever happens there. But in my head, it's dark out. I have to park in this parking lot, like far away from where I have to walk to and I'm creepy out, you know, creeped out or whatever. So I'm like, okay, before I leave, I need some sort of like protection, right? So I um, was, I don't know, obviously, there was a reason that I went for this necklace, because this is what happened next. But I was like, I'm gonna go get my grandma's necklace and wear it because she's gonna protect me tonight. <laughs> from anything bad happening in Barrington. And if you guys know that area, you'll know why that's so silly. So I go downstairs, and I, um, my, it was my jewelry box was on a dresser at the time. And I walk up to the dresser and the freaking um, jewelry box door, it was just like this small little one, was open. The necklace was hanging there. And I'll show you what the necklace looks like. So this is the necklace. And I guess it's called a birdcage. I don't know how well you can really see it if it's in. Um, but it's got this little like, there's a pearl sitting inside of it. And it has these little like wire things. And as you can see, I don't know how... To like emphasize this these wires are not loose they don't move like you have to put a lot of pressure on these freaking wires to get them to move so the necklace is hanging there these wires two of them are bent back and the pearl is sitting on my dresser I swear to god this is a true story the pearl is just sitting there it didn't roll off didn't anything and at first I'm like someone's playing a joke on me, right? Like, this is silly. I think one of my brothers was at the house at the time, and I was like, they're probably being, you know, just trying to play a prank on me or whatever. So I take the necklace, and I run up the stairs, which something else happened, but I'll tell you about that in a second. And I run up the stairs, and I'm like, okay, guys, who did this? My parents were there, and I was like, who did this? You guys are being so silly. And they're like, we have no idea what you're talking about. So I tell them what happened, and everyone is just baffled because no one was in the basement nobody went down there. Like somebody would have told me also, this is my grandma's necklace. No one would risk bending these things backwards and breaking it because it's the only thing that I have of hers. Like there's, you know, no one would ever do that. So I have no freaking idea how this happened, what happened. But, um, so then, um, when I was running up the stairs, I felt somebody running behind me. And I didn't say anything when I got upstairs because in my head I'm freaked out and I'm like, whatever. I didn't say a word. And my dad said, this is really weird. When you were running upstairs, I expected like one of the cat at the time we had cats, one of the cats to like come running up behind you because there were footsteps. Like after I had already been upstairs, there were footsteps still running up the stairs. So freaking weird. Like something had chased me up the stairs. Um, and my dad, he believes in this stuff, but he's not like if he sees something, he doesn't really say anything. So that was freaking crazy. So, um, no, like the necklace was just open. It's the craziest thing that's ever happened. It's definitely the most, um, excuse me, like things have moved before. We've never really seen them move. Um, like things have been misplaced, but this is beyond anything. I don't know. It's crazy. And I mean, I wish that I could emphasize just how difficult it is to bend these these wires back. Um, so I did fix it, put the pearl back in, and that's the necklace. So this was probably around the time that I started to get really into wanting to see mediums, and I'd never seen one before. So I decided to um, see my first medium. It was in Iowa. She was in Iowa, um, and I'll talk about her a different day. She was pretty interesting. But one of the things that I had asked was, can you tell me anything about who broke my necklace? And she does her psychic reading thing. And she said, it's a man. His name starts with a J. And all that I and all he keeps saying is I was trying to show my playful side, my childlike, like playful childlike side. And at the time, nothing like clicked or anything. 
So I get home and I'm telling my family about this and they're like, Jen, mom's brother, Jimmy, Jay, who was always like pranking people and pulling pranks like it's Uncle Jimmy. So I'll show you a picture of him just because uh, this is from his wedding. I don't know who the other guy is, so I'm going to block him out. But that's my Uncle Jim. Constantly pulling pranks, thinking he was hilarious, whatever. So I'm like, okay. So I go to another medium a couple years later and I ask the same question. Can you tell me who broke the necklace? And he didn't really tell me much. I wasn't a big fan of this medium. Um, but he just said that it was a male figure and that was really it. I'm like, okay. So continuing on a couple years later, um, to a medium that I really adore and I see her quite often, not quite often, but I see her, um, frequently and I talk to her. Um, and I asked her the same question. I said, can you tell me who broke my necklace? And she said, um, it was your grandpa. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Why would it be my grandpa? Well, hello, my grandpa's name is John is John. And it was my grandma's necklace. So all of this kind of connected. Um, and I'll show you a picture of my grandma and grandpa because any opportunity to share them, they were awesome. Um, and she gave me more details and I'll have to see if I can find the recording of it because I do have all of my readings on recording. Um, but what she had told me was really detailed about it and why and kind of confirming that it was him and not my uncle Jim. Um, but it was just so, and, and like, duh, how could I have not known that was my grand J John it was my grandma's necklace. Like so silly, but that was kind of one of the first, um, I shouldn't say the first experiences, but it was kind of the time when I had realized how, um, my grandpa's spirit or ghost, whatever you want to say is the one that messes with us around the house quite often. Um, so that's kind of cool and interesting. Um, I do think that it was really him and it wouldn't make sense that it was him because it was my grandma's necklace. Like it just, it just makes sense. Um, none of these people knew anything about me. They didn't, I think they had my phone number at the time. And when I first started seeing mediums, um, like my phone number wasn't connected with anything like social media and stuff. Whereas now if you search someone's phone number, there's things connected to them. So it was just really, really crazy. So this is the necklace that, that, uh, you know, it's just insane. So um, I'll talk more about the mediums and all those readings in another video, but I just wanted to share it because I thought it was really freaking crazy. So if you have any ghost stories, comment them below.